Hi, this is Peter with CalcBook, and today we're going to be taking another look at shear flow weld design, and this time we're going to be taking a look at a wide flange that has a bottom flange plate on it. So just kind of a quick reminder here for shear flow, um, we're going to be utilizing AISC 360 chapter J2 for the weld capacity, and then our demand, right, our shear flow demand, small q there, is just VQ over I, where V is the shear demand. Um, Q is the first moment of area of the attached element um, and so in this case it'll be the bottom plate and we'll take a look at that and then I is the moment of inertia of the entire section so right if we take our shear force somewhere along that shear diagram we're going to have a uh, sort of a, a, a shear flow diagram that looks like this on a typical wide uh, flange cross section um, and then our shear as well there so um, let's take a look at our problem statement here Right, so we have a uh, W21 by 50 with some properties there for the depth and the, the uh, flange width and so on. And then we have an attached flange plate at the bottom there that has a fillet weld on each side uh, welded to the bottom flange of the W21. Uh, the flange plate is 5 inches uh, wide and a half inch thick. Uh, those two variables there are flipped. We'll correct that. And um, our loading is, uh, we have a dead load shear of 130 kips and a live load shear of 115 kips. And we're going to be determining the minimum fillet weld uh, required using the ASD design method. So let's go ahead and open up CalcBook and we'll get started on the design. All right, we've got CalcBook open now. So we can go ahead and open uh, our steel design module. We can choose the 15th or the 16th. Um, we'll go ahead and use the 15th edition. Uh, click into our connection design. We'll toggle over to our welded connections and scroll down and then we've got our options here for shear flow. Uh, we just added two new designs, right? We added the T design and then the uh, flange plate, which we're going to jump into right now. All right, so we've got our module open. We can start to define our profile. Um, so we have a uh, 21 by 50 wide flange, so it's going to be 20.8 deep. Uh, the flange width is 6.53. The flange thickness is uh, 0 0.535. And our plate width is going to be 5 inches. The plate thickness is 0.5. And the web thickness is 0 0.38 inches. Um, the weld size we're going to leave at quarter inch, right? The problem statement wanted us to figure out what the minimum weld size uh, we could use. So we'll leave it at a quarter and then we can adjust it later. Um, we do need to toggle over and change this to ASD. So click into our settings here. Um, click over to ASD, click confirm. Okay, now we're in ASD. Uh, we can add our demands. So we are going to use the ASC 716 load combinations. Our dead load is 130 kips. And our live load is 115 kips. Okay, and now that we've got all that entered, now we can start to jump into our calculation. So um, our shear calculation rate for our load combination is just going to be dead plus live, so a total of 245 kips. Our demand on our weld, right, this is where a lot of the calculation is. Um, so first thing we need to do is calculate some section properties. So height of the web, um, our area of all the components, so our flange, web, flange plate. Um, and then uh, the total area of the entire combined section. And then we need to calculate the distance to the centroid of the section, right? So we have this plate now attached to the bottom of our wide flange. So from the bottom of this plate, we need to find where the centroid is, right? Which is not the center of the wide flange section. So um, we calculate that, which is basically the area of the uh, individual pieces times their distance to, uh, or their distance from their centroid to the bottom and then we divide by the total area and that gets us the distance to the centroid. The next thing we need to do is calculate the first moment of area and this is of the attached piece so for the plate that we welded to the bottom right we get the area of the plate and then we multiply that by the distance from its centroid to the centroid of the shape and that gets us 22.71 inches uh, third to the third. Um, and then what we do is we calculate our moment of inertia of the entire system, right? Now that we have our centroid distance. So we'll run through each of the pieces and we get a total moment of inertia of about 1200 inches to the fourth. Um, and then from there we can calculate our weld stress, right? So we have our, uh, our weld uh, equation there for small q, vq over i. So we take our v of 245 kips, our first moment of area q, big Q, and then divide by our moment of inertia. And we get uh, a required shear uh, per linear inch of 4.63 kips per inch. And that is going to be our, de our demand or our required uh, shear demand in the weld. 
And then when we calculate the capacity of the fillet weld, right? remember that we just have two welds here, so we need to multiply this area of weld by two. Um, and then we go through our normal weld strength capacity calculation for a fillet weld, and we, we have a capacity of 7.42 kips per inch. So we're at a DC ratio of 0 0.62, so we have some additional room here. If we wanted to sort of optimize our design, we could drop this down to 3 sixteenths, and we're at 0.83. We can go down to 1 8 and that puts us over. So if we go back to 3 16 that is going to be our uh, optimum design here, optimum weld leg size for uh, for the fillet weld to uh, resist the applied loading. So that is a, um, a, a shear flow design with a uh, bottom flange plate uh, in CalcBook. We hope you enjoyed this one. If you guys have comments or suggestions on other calculations uh, that you'd like to see, please let us know in the comments below, and we'll see you next time.